So hello everyone and welcome to the fifth episode of the experience talk. Today we are going to speak about the impact of customer experience on business metrics. So what is experience talk? For all the new listeners out there, we launched this podcast to help growth stage companies start their VOC programs. And in the last few episodes, we discuss about what is a VOC program, how we can kick it off, what is customer journey mapping, why it is important. And we also conducted a way to run a journey mapping workshop. And today we'll be speaking about what are these VOC and CX metrics and how we can correlate them with business data. And one more thing, for the very first time, we are live from three different countries, India, Indonesia, NK, and Nigeria, Debbie. I'm Tanuj, Head of Product and Service Center with NK, our CX head. And today we have a very, very special guest with us and one of the most prominent CX thought leaders, Debbie Aquara. So Thank Debbie you. is one of the well-recognized CX leaders from Africa. She is running her own CX firm for the past six years. And I've spoken to Debbie a couple of times and I always get blown up by the passion she has for CX. And sometimes it feels like I can listen to her for hours and hours and hours and still it would not be enough. So thank you so much, Debbie, for joining us today and sharing your thoughts. Would, would you like to share thank a bit you, about thank your Thank you for thoughts? having me. Thank you for having me. I mean, you, you've, you've said it on really, there's not much. Um, so there's something really strange about me is in person, I get really shy talking about myself. Compared to when I'm talking about CX, I can just talk about myself. I like to just keep <laughs> short and sweet. And I think you've done that already. So I'll run with the introduction that you made. <laughs> oh, okay, Debbie. I'll ride on that, yeah. I know you got. I know you got the score of outside in ten on ten for this one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so one of my favorite books. So it's, uh, good to hear that, NK. And thank you so much again, Devi, for joining in. So, Devi, uh, without uh, wasting a lot of time, I'll start with one thing, very important thing. Uh, whenever we talk to any growth stage company, they they have a new CX head coming in. Uh, they have a very difficulty in making their CEOs understand that how customer experience can impact a business top line, right? So for, for getting to that part, we would like to understand what are these VOC and CX metrics uh, in a B2C company and how we should measure them? So let me, let me start with context, right? And I think this is where we get it really wrong as customer experience professionals. The first thing that you do when you get into a business for the first time, whether as a chief customer experience officer or head of customer experience or vice president, the titles go on and on and on. Mm -hmm. The first thing that you want to do is not to identify what the matrix is, right? So there are two things, identifying what the matrix is or just going online and checking for what are the matrix people are measuring. That's not the thing to do. And that's where we get it wrong. So if that's the approach that you use as a professional, you would definitely hit a roadblock in showing the value. Now, think about, cause, and this is why I like to describe customer experience as a product, mm -hmm. a product or a service that solves a business problem. Now, the business problem is the company's organization's inability to either do three things, acquire customers, satisfy right. customers, or retain customers. Absolutely. So if I can show you as a business owner how customer experience can help you solve those three problems, right then it, it makes it easy breezy now in this case what i've said so far i have not said anything about customer experience metrics absolutely yeah because these are technologies you know it's like talking to an account an accountant talking to you and talking about balance sheet profit and loss all the time without providing context to your business so right. the first thing that you need to do as a professional when you take on a task to transform an organization with tx perspective is to understand what I have created what I've called the voice of the business. We would always say start with the voice of the customer, but no, that's the wrong approach. The right approach is start with the voice of the, the business has a voice. Absolutely. The voice is other, we need more customers, we are losing money, we're losing customers. We'll start, like the, the company business always has a voice. Now in the voice of the business, you will find the problem the business is facing, you will find goals, you will find objectives, you will find mission, you will find vision. Your responsibility as CX is to focus on the problem and goal. Because the problem obviously will prevent the business from achieving the goal. Now, if your business, for instance, tells you they want to expand a certain market segment, that's the goal of the business. And then that is what the focus of the business is in 2021, for instance. 
you have no business as a CX professional pushing metrics to show value. Like, like the word metrics should not even be at the back seat. The first thing that you need to do, if you want, you're, you're, you've been assigned this task, you've been hired as the chief right. customer experience officer. The first thing that you need to do is understand the voice of the business, which is what's, what's the goal of the business, right? right? So you can look at long-term, you can look at immediate, which is within it. And it's always best to focus on short-term goals and then evolve into long-term goals of the business. Now, right. from a customer's perspective, what are the challenges impacting the business that ability to achieve that goal? That's where mm -hmm. you come in. Now, in doing that analysis, you now begin to speak to customers and you can speak, you can, you can broaden your scope to cover a broad range of customers, right? So those who have done business with you and have left, those who are still doing business with you and those who you're even targeting and have not bought from you. Right. Now you can understand the voice of those people. That's where voice of customer now comes in. Right. Understand the voice of the, but then in other words, you have to, you have to understand the journey of, the customer for your organization, where does it start? Where does it end? Journeys are different, right? Where does it start? Where does it end? So when you have that information, and then you now look at the voice of employees, which is where, so for voice of employees, I always recommend conducting a customer experience maturity assessment. Now, because what that does is it gives you an overview of the business from a competency framework perspective. So you're looking at strategy, you're looking at organizational adoption and accountability, um, you're looking at um, voice of customer, you're looking at experience design and innovation, you're looking at measurement, right? right? So one of the things we do at the firm is we have designed that form across those five key, those, um, yeah, six key buckets, right? Now you take feedback from customers right? and then you take feedback from employees. So voice of customer, voice of employees, and then you put that side by side, the voice of the business. I have seen this work a thousand and one times. It's like magic. <laughs> it's pure because the business now sees right. that, hello, let's just take a moment and understand what's going on here. Right. The business now sees that we haven't even scratched the surface or we are focused on the right things or we have five goals. Let's prioritize this goal this first, goal. Mm. which will give us specific wins with customers. Absolutely. So, so if you really want to win in that way, you just get on, don't worry about the meetings to sort itself out. Because when you show insights from voice of business, voice of customer employee, there you will find the things you need to focus on and you can determine the right metrics. Then you can and determine right so for you if you and you could frame it as you know how do we what do we focus on mm -hmm. right how do we focus on that thing what do we do to improve how do we measure success measuring success is where you now bring in the metric now right. in measuring success you're placing the metric side by side all the things that you want to do to change the position of the company so mm -hmm. if for instance you find things like customers are not happy with their onboarding in terms of that a metric could be a particular score for onboarding experience, satisfaction for onboarding. Right. And then in cases where metrics don't exist globally, create right. one. Create one, right? So that's just it. Like, start with the right things. Mm -hmm. Metrics is fine. But metrics is an aftermath of work that you put in to improve. So we should so always focus on. With voice of the business that's the first most important thing exactly exactly so, so start understand the business understand what's going on mm -hmm. then work when you, while you work on improving what you know or while you work on what you need to do to improve that current position right. how will you measure success of what you do that's right. the metric so at that's that point it. what you've done is and this is one of the things that i teach at the firm i teach customer experience strategy and it mm -hmm. starts with how to develop a strategy proposal. It has all these things in it. So when you're presenting this now, it begins to show the CEO that you understand the business. You understand the business, where the business is going. You understand the place right. of the customer in where the business is going. You understand the place right. of employees, where the business is going. Then you're bringing it home to why you have brought me here to transform CX. So if we do this, we're measuring what targets are we setting for ourselves? Are we saying CSAT 90%? Are 
Now, this is where it comes in, where you begin to set superficial targets for yourself. What I always advise is when you set a target, let it be, so for instance, if you have an overall CSAT score for a business that has four different or five different products and services, and you have one product that has the highest CSAT, I always advise take everybody up to what is working and then begin to progress from there. Now, that is where you, you bring in value. So if you tell the CEO that we are this now with, with uh, let's say, with um, subscriptions on this product, the satisfaction level is 5%, but all the other ones, 65, 75, we're going to take learning from this one, get every other person up to 85% and find our own expression. Mm -hmm. Now, another way to get the CEO attention with metrics is when you have improved that metrics, how are you selling it? Because you right. need to repeat the cycle. Right. You need to repeat the cycle. So if you improve the product, are you selling the improvement? Is the improvement impacting adoption rates and acquisition right. rates? Mm -hmm. and so that yeah. brings me to the issue of having the customer experience balance scorecard. I am so excited about this new product, this new invention for us at the firm. Because right. having the information that cuts across all the stages of the customer's journey in right. one dashboard for a CEO, right? right? And then he's saying it that, so in a month, you're saying this, we did all the exercises and this month uh, we had sales increased by this. this. More customers were happy and bought the product. Um, mm -hmm. And you begin to see the story and the journey. I promise mm -hmm. you, you will not struggle with getting stakeholder buy-in. But just don't focus on, oh, it's CX, it's a profession. We have to do CSAT, we have to do this metric, we have to show value. Sometimes effort score may not be your problem. Absolutely. This is a yeah. great, great insight, Debbie. Thank you so much for sharing this. So I'll, I'll repeat that for everyone. So it should start with voice of the business, then comes voice of the customers, and then comes voice of the employees. And when you measure them all together, then you come up with the metrics that are needed to improve what is going on with the business, right? So that yeah. way, correlating would much make more sense rather than just putting a metric out there. This is exactly, exactly. Yeah. And it baffles me when I see, oh, my green curtain is sticking out. Just ignore that's a part of the background. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, and, and it, it amazes me when people reach out to me, though, I just assume this new rule. I don't know what metrics to focus on. Right. Why are you bothered about the metric? Get into the, understand the business, get in, get involved. Let the business, let, let the metrics speak to you. Absolutely. Definitely. And I've seen this happen over and over. I'm working on a few projects right now and setting up a customer experience team for, for a bank here right. in Nigeria. And the same thing, the same thing. In fact, in this case, we had the, 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 the business survey done by another consulting firm. Mm -hmm. But Absolutely. when we did our, so we, we did the internal one point, we did the VOE. And right. the, another firm did the VOC before we, before we came on the project, right? Okay. But mm -hmm. guess what? When we did the VO, when we reviewed the voice of the business mm -hmm. and we reviewed the VOE, the data from the other third party um, firm, everything was aligned. Which was not done before though. Everything was aligned. You could see where the pain points were. Right. I, I completely yeah. get your point. I think we'll, we'll come to that too. Debbie would love to talk about that again. NK, would, would you, you were about to ask something to Debbie? No, I think... I'm surprised uh, he hasn't said anything. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think, he promised uh, yeah. to be nice. He promised to be nice. He texted me as well. <laughs> yeah, I texted, I texted him just to make sure that I'm, I'm, I'm taking uh, less time. So I think... Uh, very insightful, uh, Debbie, because it, it sinks back again to what we discussed on the other day is that the business start, like you know, anything starts from the core. So um, it's not NPSC set or CES. It's basically understand who you are, why you are, and what you serve, right? and to whom you are serving, right? And once you yeah. get that right value, mission, and act, and then your actions would define your your metrics. So uh, very on, on, on the point, yeah. I, I loved it. So yeah. one question for both of you guys. Uh, so once like we have understood the voice of the business, we have, okay, now the metrics have been figured out. So as a CX guy, Debbie, can the metrics for product marketing or support and everything can be figured out by just uh, getting to the voice of the business. And if everything can be figured out for every team, how do we get alignment across them? 
like okay the product should own onboarding right even though the cx guy is looking at it but product is owning onboarding marketing is owning yeah. acquisition right so how do you yeah. get that alignment as a cx guy once you come in so um, how you get that alignment is working with the business to understand the customer journey, what mm-hmm. the customer journey blueprint is for that organization. Mm-hmm. Now, cost- and, and this is what we do for every project we start. We get everybody in the room. I want and everybody, all the departments represented. And we ask, where does the customer journey start? Oh, it starts with this guy designed the product, okay. And then what happens when the marketing takes over, they do their thing. Right. And then you have sales, and then IT, and find legal comes in at the point of onboarding, risk comes in. We have all of that conversation. Now, in that, we have like this template to use at the firm where we create a customer journey blueprint. So in that blueprint, you have what the what what the what the goal of the business is for each of we define the cycle stages. And okay. it's different for different businesses. Mm-hmm. So we define the cycle stages to understand what that is. Then we now look at what's the action for the customer. What's the customer required to do to benefit from the blueprint per cycle stage? Right. Now, when we're done with that, we go to the business. What's the business required to do to help the customer achieve this objective for the cycle mm-hmm. stage? Now, with business, we now attach responsible parties. Mm-hmm. So you can now see, okay, designing the product, who is the product development, that's the responsibility. Right. Or is it marketing the product is marketing? Do all then how do you measure success of each cycle stage? Hmm. Then we'll now introduce how you check adopt, like for instance, with the product and the product goes live. Right. What's the adoption rate of the product? What's right. the error rate on the product? Right. And what's the customer churn rates on the product? Right? right. Well, then are there defects? What's the product defect rate? Hmm. Now we start begin, we're not beginning to see that for each cycle stage, you have the responsible party in the business, and then you have how you measure the success for each of the responsible parties. So it right. now goes into a very extensive, it's a lot of work, but the truth is when you put in the work, mm-hmm. you know, it comes out to you. Then what we now do next is design an end to end customer experience management process mm-hmm. in a flow. Right. It's just like say customer journey management, for want a better right. word. So in that process flow, we're showing pictorially where the launch starts to the customer, what the customer does, all the decisions. But we don't have process flows work with all the, the shapes and BMP and shapes and all of that stuff, right? right? Then we show the departments on the, so you have the department on the left side, in the, in the little, like in each of the lanes. Right. And it states where it goes where, where it goes where, and then the KPIs are highlighted. Mm-hmm. Then at that point, you begin to see after every key cycle stage, right? When a milestone is achieved, customer experience management team is captured their feedback. Right. Customer insight analytics feedback. So mm-hmm. if you go through this route, customer experience is very strategic, right? right. In the management, management perspective. So mm-hmm. if you go through this route, you're carrying everybody along. Now, for the clients that we do this for, we always recommend before you approve the flow we have done for you, we need to have a meeting with everybody. That's okay. how we do it. So we, the, our clients invite all the different departments who are represented mm-hmm. in that flow. Right. And right. we talk about, they ask, well, oh, but this isn't right, this isn't right. But everybody has to be aligned. So alignment starts from the very beginning. Right. Now, when mm-hmm. this happens, everybody knows their task. Everybody knows their role. Right. Everybody knows their KPI. Right. right. Then you now begin to take that flow. It's a lot of work. And these are things that, you know, we have invented at the firm over time because of how fluid different businesses are. How do we create governance? How do we create structure? How do mm-hmm. we drive adoption and accountability? Right. And then once that flow is approved by all the heads of the department is binding, everyone needs to abide by it. So, uh, right? so one question on this, Debbie. I think this is yeah. very insightful that once once we do a journey mapping, that all gets start, sorted and aligned. But how, mm-hmm. like, you, you are the new guy, as a, a new CX guy. You're just coming in and you are just pushing boundaries, right? If you're doing customer journey mapping, you're <laughs> pushing boundaries for sure, right? So how do you get that kind of alignment? For for a new person, it's very important that you, you get yeah. to be kind of like friends with them, right? Otherwise, it will be like you're pushing them around, correct? Yeah, so how, how, yeah. how can that happen? It's, um, it's, it's not, it's not, it's not um, push. Again, it's about technique and how you go about it, which is the place of 
emotional intelligence in CX. Right. If your driving change. So you're a new guy in the business. Mm-hmm. Definitely, you can't just sit in isolation and want to fix the world. You have to ask <laughs> who does what, how do they, how those things work here. You have to go around, introduce yourself. I want to understand marketing, where you come in. I want to understand. You begin to, because guess what? Beyond that interaction, you need these guys to help you improve CX. Right. So you walk, it's not, it's, I mean, it's not a trick. It's just not something, just walk around. What do you do? Your next meeting, can I just hop in and just see what you're doing? And then again, it's about how you present yourself. You're not there to save the world. You're there to collaborate and make the best of everything. How can I help you make this better? And this is what I found out. When the wings come, right. unfortunately, CX, when you're working in an organization, CX is a profession where nobody says thank you. But every other person expects to be rewarded. Right. So when the, when the wings come, mm-hmm. let the others who did the work shine. So okay. if products was amazing, improvements done, the reward goes to the product team. Not you. The next time you go ask for something, oh, that's Debbie. No, we are giving her, what else can we, we need to cut off our arm, we cut off our arm, we give it to you. <laughs> no, I right? get this point, Debbie. Yeah, exactly. So it's, it's a very selfless role. It's a role where you give a lot of yourself. Mm. Um, it's all about helping people. You okay. can't lead CX if you don't know how to serve, how to integrate with people, how to be emotionally intelligent. Mm-hmm. That's the, so when you get into an organization, you don't just get in there and you want to have all the big, you don't have any idea. Put it aside. You don't have, put it aside. You don't have any idea. Put it aside. The ideas that will come are from the people that you're there to serve. Mm-hmm. All you're doing is putting icing on the cake. If you have this approach, they will be open. And I've seen, I've worked organizations where it's an open door policy, very informal. Mm-hmm. I've also worked in places where it's very old school, like who are you? We've done this five years before you came. You know, I've done, but I, I won in those two different scenarios. Right. So, you so have, it's like you saying, have to adjust to the surroundings. Like you have to adjust. It's mm-hmm. and it's a life skill. Right. It's a very, it's a very hard skill to have, you. Debbie. <laughs> yeah. So it, it's again, it's about what's important to you. Is it the goal or is it staying in your box? Right. No, I, I so you choose. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, it will push you. CX will push you out of managing CX will push you out of your comfort zone for sure. Yeah. NK is just nodding like, oh, let me speak, right? Um, this, no, NK's I think uh, <laughs> NK is just loving I think it. I, I I'm uh, I'm gonna keep my promise uh not to speak because I know uh, like like Tanuj Mpral is saying that. I'm unable to stop baby. Now when NK will start, how will I stop? <laughs> so I'm just making it and it's like less trouble. But I think Debbie, you have uh, really well said, um, if, I, if I have to get the you know uh, understanding uh, and to answer your question, Tanuj, mm-hmm. basically uh, the customer experience journey is what does it say that define CX kind of, right? Define customer right. experience, where you get to understand uh, your customer more well and understand where they are connecting with you. And then you design the, you know, the progress plan and what you want to do and how to measure and whatnot. Right. The second element that uh, was, is like customer experience management. Hmm. So there is a difference. There is one customer experience. And that the second thing is the customer experience management. Hmm. People uh, doing customer experience is easy. Like, you know, journey mapping and defining and everything is like the first level of task. I would say it's not easy, but that the first level of task, most of the people Mm. do it. Uh, But the second level of task, when it comes about customer experience management, and most of the people fail out here. Right. So that is where like we need uh, much more aggressive as a CX uh, 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 practitioner. We need Mm. to make sure that how people are, are aligned. Like Debbie said, it, it's, it's basically it takes like you have to be emotional, uh, empathetic, uh, compassion, and then along with like and you should have an excellence. So right. these will combine with help you to drive the team towards customer experience management. Hmm. Uh, so I think from customer experience to customer experience management journey, I think that's a journey that people would have to travel to for the maturity of it. Right. I have, see, this is really interesting for me and K and Debbie. It's, there are some things which are completely new to be true. 
like how it can be done and it it was important for like uh, for for me also to understand because you guys are cx champions i am a product guy it is important for for me to know your perspective as well, as well and i'm loving it uh, so there this was one question like nk you wrote it down you wanted to ask right uh you remember you asked about like we always yeah, talk yeah. about metrics like and so, yeah, i think let me, i okay. i can you had this. a very interesting question <laughs> take take that up so, yeah, yeah. so the question debi that i had is like you know whenever we work out on the customer experience program what we what i have seen also people would talk about the nps cs csat they want to track it and also sometimes benchmarking and that relates with their uh, specifically you know voice of business you know what they are trying to achieve out of this i'm just like thinking out of the box question here is um, like what could be the uh, metric to measure the empathy like you know the the uh, qualitative part of the customer right you know the how the sentiment of the customer has been throughout the journey nps gives you like some numbers and detractor passive promoter at a high level uh, but how organization should uh, you know take care of the emotion part of the customer so i think um it depends on the business or the product whether it's a product or a service and it also depends on the persona of the customer that you're targeting yeah. now what businesses can do is again this is where the blueprinting comes in in terms of your customer journey right what kind of emotions do you want to elicit from our customers right and you can pull this from asking customers how do we make you feel mm-hmm. how do we make you feel mm-hmm. just ask a customer and take all that information mm-hmm. and you can put it in the word cloud and see what are the top 5 ways we make customers feel and this yeah. is for your business right now if you take the top 5 and you rank them so you want to focus on 10 right and you rank them and then we can now begin to map sentiment to satisfaction levels so if i made you feel um elated mm-hmm. and then i look at your behavior i know the elated is satisfaction for my business so it becomes more emotional when you call the contact center or you visit a store and you're done and the question you're getting is not rate our service it's asking how did we make you feel today right and then you give them your top 5 Hmm. yeah you've yeah, done absolutely. the work already so give yeah. them your top 5 then create room if nothing exists that expresses how we made you feel please tell us right yeah, because you're building that pool so every quarter or every year or twice a year review that whole emotional appeal how you make because see it's all about perception it's about feelings about emotions mm-hmm. so for 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 businesses who are looking to take it a step further into Let's go beyond just say satisfied. Let I want to know how how I connect my customers emotionally every time they interact with me across all cycle stages. Then you can use this this, this approach which I have just talked about. This is what I know, right? So I'm a very practical person. I would only share what has worked. I wouldn't tell you something I read by by rules just the way I operate. I can read it, but until I test it, I won't share it. Right. So but I yeah. think this is that yeah so if you want to go online and look for emotion that's fine and use that for your business that's fine what my best approach would be ask you how did i make you feel today it's going to be a lot of work with cx management is a lot of work right and case right. then your work just ask the question put it in a word cloud how do we make you how do we make you feel last year how do right. we make you feel generally how do, after every interaction and then use the intelligence around that data to mm-hmm. create your own emotional bank mm. So don't tell I mean and it would be so amazing to have more business to say how did we make you feel rather than saying see how did we make you feel today special so special in where where we have done the work in mapping sentiments to satisfaction levels special could be very satisfied but that's like you made me feel like a million bucks so that's right. very satisfied then as yeah. simple as that uh, what what I'm thinking if like just coming from your conversation you guys correct me if I'm wrong instead of asking a csat question how satisfied were you with the agent today why not ask how did we make you feel today give five smileys mm-hmm. extremely unspecial to extremely special just an example and then ask a open ended yeah. question where they can tell us the their sentiment as well right where you can use exactly. the word clouds and text and sentiment analysis to get 
how how we are making them feel. Yeah, yeah. But let but let the sentiments be inspired by the work you have put in to understand how you generally, if mm, not, yeah. you will all start replicating the same emotions, and then no, there's no innovation. Right. Yeah, and I think yeah. like I I have another perspective here because. Um, uh it depends upon how you ask the question right so make sure that we are not like making it so obvious that uh, like uh, how delighted were you or like the, don't make it like so uh, yeah. you know narrow to being positive or negative right so the yeah. the way we are asking question is very important right so like instead of yeah. saying that hey you know uh, uh how happy you are or maybe like the question would be say this Uh, were you able to achieve your goals and targets with my product and services rather than asking hey. that hey you know right there uh, you go ha like, did my you know were, like yeah. how, how was the product or service like satisfied yeah. not satisfied no, i'm not interested yeah. i'm not interested in answering that but if you ask me that the question is for me or you right right so yeah, so if, if yeah. you think like just yes, customer you know he's asking about me whether i was able to get this successful or not you get more insights yeah. and then also get associated with your brands and services so yeah, just a little absolutely. shift in shift in uh, shift in the wordings yeah. uh, beat the yeah. other yeah. hand makes like lot of yeah. lot of sense here yeah, yeah. i'm yeah. going to and imagine that. imagine imagine when you now use the reason as is the contact center imagine when you now use the reason for call to ask the question right Did we solve your problem today? Were we able to resolve? You? Are you back online? Mm, Make it yeah. more personable. So if I had issues logging in, right? Like for instance, now I'm trying to, I just signed up for, signed up, open an account with the bank. I'm trying to activate internet banking, and I can't do that. I'm reaching out to support. So right. the question to me is, were you able to log in, and are you enjoying your internet banking experience? Personified, mm. not are you satisfied with? Like there's so, it's just about being on the. Every business has an expression, mm. and we need to embrace that expression in CX. All right. <laughs> and when we begin I... to do that, CX, the practice and profession of CX, will expand beyond our imagination because we're dealing with human beings, and they change every day. And CX is all about managing emotions. and tanuj uh, like to add on this point is you will uh, again have challenges mm -hmm. in terms of and i'm like been working on this guys getting what questions to be asked is also like very crucial and you also need to get approvals that whether we should ask this yeah. question whether it's making a business impact or whether you're just mm -hmm. asking this question that gives you some sentiment and you know blah 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 mm. so being on the customer experience side you would want to say that hey you know i want to get to know more about customer you know right. understanding yeah. how they feel it but on the mm -hmm. other hand the business side would say hey you know how can i get about the churn rate you know how many people are churning can i not ask that direct question that gives me more clarity on it right it's so again you would say that it's it's on a debate uh, competition way uh, you know which questions to be asked and you know which one has mm -hmm. more priority and where cx has to come back and say that hey you know the uh, the value that what you were trying to get out of that will come automatically that's a by product question right yeah so this is how that needs to get an approval uh within an alignment across the organization when you ask questions so be it product or be marketing or be sales right that how each touch point you are asking feedback from customers in which mm -hmm. type of question need to be asked that also yeah. alignment needs to be there with the team within the team yeah. being a product guy nk uh, what we actually do we always test and try so so that is something that is different which product people do launch something yeah, ab testing a survey, ab right? testing is very common in right. the customer experience also <laughs> like you know yeah. that's another way to to look at uh, what results are you getting in absolutely uh, so that's important right yeah so, but but you you only have have you like you have seen like ab testing but you have not seen about abcd testing right <laughs> so, so so let's stick to the ab testing only not yeah. abcd <laughs> i get that point i think very interesting conversation again uh, this emotional part was something uh, which i i have learned completely learned i hope like once we share this recording with people this is going to be really helpful so uh, one uh, another question uh, guys that comes a lot to us uh, is um, okay well, once we have this like we have done the journey mapping uh, we have uh, the, noted on the metrics for product for marketing for every kind of 
own we have assigned ownerships and everything now how do we first of first question is when do we actually uh, have a look at it like it's like a monthly meeting that we do as a cx guy with all these owners that how we are going above are we meet, meeting those metrics or is it quarterly how how it is, how it is done and how frequent it should be well, so i i think it depends on the business really and um, what i would personally i would i usually advise quarterly okay so that you give yourselves time to improve well in 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 between you're also reporting you're monitoring your your monitoring your customer experience dashboard right very important mm-hmm. it's very important to have a customer experience that which is the CX balance scorecard that, you know, one of the projects that I'm championing at the moment that I kind of discovered in the course of my practice. So right. if you, every company needs a customer experience dashboard that speaks to all CX activities in that organization. Mm-hmm. So you can report that monthly. Mm-hmm. Then you have your quarterly strategic meeting right. on, on, on CX, on the program improvement and all of that. And then, you, so it's kind of like a strategic meeting, like a SWOT analysis. Do your SWOT before that meeting, and right. everybody brainstorms on what we can do differently. Right. But the reason why I'm saying quarterly is so that you give yourself time to improve. One of the things that we don't do well um, as CX professionals working in the organization is that whole CX improvement burnout. We keep throwing things in. We need to do this today. We need to do that tomorrow. Everybody has a job function. Everybody is not your, doesn't do what you do. Right. So you have to make time in their schedule mm-hmm. such that they can also see value in their work. Right. So if it's quarterly, you give them time to improve. They have all the KPIs. They have all the things they need to do. They have their own job description. So mm-hmm. that, that would be my recommendation. Quarterly would be ideal, mm-hmm. but share your monthly reports. Share a monthly customer experience dashboard report, mm-hmm. which right. now speaks to, um, again, I, I, I'm having an amazing time being a CX consultant because I'm discovering new things every day. Mm-hmm. And one of the things I found is that businesses have spent so much money on IT, hiring the right people, all of that, and then CX comes to the plate. Now, how do you now create that customer experience dashboard that speaks to all areas? Is where we come in. And we recently launched a tech business at Niche that okay. focuses on we can help you design so we partner with different firms. Whoever has technology, we're happy to use to introduce to our clients. Or if you have the resource in-house, you just need guidance on requirement gathering. You need some expert opinion on how to build the dashboard. We're right. there to help. So that's for the tech business. So again, it's about CX is now, mo- and we're championing this. Right? I'm, champ- I'm very passionate about this because I've seen the benefits in right. just balancing it out end to end. It's not just about satisfaction and NPS. Mm-hmm. And in my opinion, NPS is not a C, it's not a, it's not a, a, a core, it's like more of marketing. Because the whole point of CX, the benefit of NPS, the outcome of NPS is that your cost to acquire a customer drops. Right. Because if you're recommending, it means that I'm spending less on marketing. Right. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So that's the out, so that's the the the, the core. That's the core. So have that, have that um, dashboard very, and let it cover, let everybody see themselves in it. Mm-hmm. So have the dashboard, collate, make sure the data you can pull from different parts of the business, right. it speaks for itself. And then you can have your quarterly review meetings. Right. So I, I Then you it. can repeat your measurements. You know, if you're doing that broad measurement, you can repeat that, you can do that twice a year. So mm-hmm. there's room for improvement. Okay. So one question that comes on this, Debbie. Uh, so like yes. once we have created that dashboard, okay, so CX guy helped everything, uh, created everything so that everyone could see. But there, all these metrics would be for different teams, right? CX, as you mentioned, is icing on the cake. So how would we measure success of a CX guy? Is there where that correlation between CX and business metrics comes in? So CX metrics is business metrics. Right. If you come from a VOB perspective, mm-hmm. there's no difference. Right. The CX matrix is the business matrix. Business matrix. Right. Because yeah, I, again, no, I've, you know, I've talked about I have a different dialect on this, uh, Debbie, uh, yeah. because sure. I, I, I create a differentiation here that is uh, basically CX metric is more of on the uh, measuring on the customer experience point of view, how they felt it, how happy they were, and then, you know, trying to understand uh, their loyalty. 
uh, in terms of it. Mm-hmm. So NPS could be a CX metric where trying to understand your uh, loyalty across your brand. Right. And CSAT is also like, you know, trying to understand satisfaction and all of that. But the, the business metric is more of like trying to understand if that NPS was able to drive your revenue or like is the customer is churning out mm-hmm. uh, and like, you know, your churn rate is decreasing, increasing. That is that is something that business people are more interested on. But where I am more yeah. of like, you know, yeah. yes, so that, that's the CX matrix. Your churn rate is a CX matrix. That's what I mean. Like when, when, when you align it from that voice of business, it becomes one. Right. So if I give you a, a business said this year we want to achieve, we want to get five thousand new customers. Yeah. Right. That's the, that's the goal for the business. Five thousand new customers. Now for CX, where are the customers? Who are they? Where can we find them? That's defining the persona and the profile. It might it's so the CX for customer understanding to be executed by marketing or product developers case making. Mm-hmm. But it's still a CX. It's, it's still, so CX is not, is not, I'm not speaking about CX now from a function. I'm talking about CX from the concept of the entire organization. Right. Right. It's, now, it's if I hear about. about so, so basically sorry? CX, I'm saying like basically CX is the umbrella where business already come inside it. So exactly. you say like that way. So exactly. you still want to so say it, that this is CX metric, this is business metric, but your CX umbrella covers everything. Right. Um, so again, I don't, I, I hear you and I get what you're trying to say, but I, I, I beg to differ because the separation is what causes the problem. Okay. The separation I, is what causes the problem. I, I totally so, agree so that... So if you say, um, it's like saying we're not selling as a business. That's a marketing metric. No, no, I, I totally agree that there is a separation. But the reason uh, why I say that, because if you want to get a buy-in, you know, these are the two pillars and you have to create uh, like a uh, way yeah, to match up with yeah. them. And the reason yeah. is that if we just talk about the, uh, you know, the churn, the revenue and this price and everything, People are always thinking about that. Then how do I bring the customer centricity in it, right? So I have to drive them and say that this is something that you need to focus on. Your your metrics will also be taken care. It's it's not yeah. a separate thing, but we have yeah. to get them aligned together uh, in that. Yes. In that yes. Yeah. Let me let me give you an example. Mm-hmm. You come up with a fantastic product, and then you just say products now available. Buy now and put out that ad. Nobody's gonna buy. Mm, definitely. Now if nobody and then you put out the mat- your marketing material, nobody calls, nobody emails. It means that, and then you spent, let's say, a million dollars in your marketing. Mm-hmm. And then over one month, nobody calls, nobody emails, nobody likes your post on LinkedIn, social media, nobody comments, nobody reaches out. Your convers- your engagement rate is zero. Right. From a customer experience perspective, it is now a case of, okay, did you see the ad? Why didn't you respond to it? Because a typical marketing message from a customer experience perspective speaks to five things. Number one, it speaks to understanding who the customer is. Mm. Number two, the problem the customer is having. Number three, the solution to that problem. Number four, why my product is the best solution that you can choose of the options in the market. And number five, what do you do next? Call, email, get started, download, whatever. Right. If your market, and these are all CX, it's all about the cost managing the customer's experience. If I am drawn to all of these messages, I will click, I will download, I will call, I will do what I need to do. Right. Now, from a CX perspective, if you look at the dashboard document that I shared, you will see the first part is engagement. How many people, what were the conversations people were, were, in, people were having on your marketing material? Mm-hmm. Are they liking, are they resharing, right? That in itself is data. Yep. It's helping you understand your customers a bit more. That's why you have, oh, my post had 5,000 likes. It's for a reason. It's engagement, right? Mm-hmm. Then how many people actually picked up the phone to call oh. or email? That now goes into leads. Right. And then from leads, when they call in the email, how many people actually bought the product? Mm-hmm. Again, insights. Who are the people that bought and why? Who are oh. those that didn't buy and why? And if you check, you go back to your mark, your engagement and your marketing. Where did we get it wrong? Plug it, add that, put it back. 
So the business in itself has different expressions and CX is one of those expressions that you need to measure. To your point, NK, it's the alignment miss is missing when we don't look at the full scope of yep. CX and we only focus on CSAT, NPS, FO score. The alignment is missing because we fail to, and it's, it's up in the slide, it's, we fail to look at the full scope of CX. Where, it's, where does customer experience start? And where Correct. does it end? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think like I like because the, the segregation has started where people are now say that CX is a department. So I think that is creates a differentiation that, oh, this is CX. This is, we don't do it, right? We are from product department or we are from like, you know, client servicing or we are from sales or we yeah. are from invoicing. Yeah. So is the invoicing team is not part of a CX team or CX vertical is not related with that. That's create a lot of, yeah. you know, the gap exactly exactly customer is related from the product to the invoicing completely mm -hmm. so that completes the chain for entire cx program cx is not yeah. so i think like as a cx professional what we have done is just creating that a segregation of like a department oh now we have a new department we have hired new cx ceo C, cxo in the team uh, we have four cx champion blah 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 i think that itself yeah. like creates a, a mind barrier into the different departments that, yeah. okay, yeah. this is a new department. So I think, yeah. how, what do you suggest? Like, you know, how, how, how someone should break this silo and not seeking uh, a customer experience as a different department, but actually a, part a of layer, the team. entire team. I, it's, it's, yeah. it's, a, it's a very similar yeah, to have, driving as a CEO. Yeah. CEO is only one. So CXO is only one that handles the entire department. It's not, CXO is not only responsible for uh, the CX department, but yeah. rather he has control over the entire organization. Right. Yeah, yeah. I, I, think, I think we're part of the problem as a professional, safe professional, because we have enhanced the silo mentality by kind of separating it. But when you look at it from the perspective of the full scope, of CX activities, not the management now, which is the function. Right. The full scope of CX activities ends to end from design to loyalty. In that full scope, you have the expression of all the different departments within an organization. Mm -hmm. And there's something that we've designed, which we call the CX um, uh, competency framework, where every single person across all levels, across the business, should be proficient in customer experience management to a certain degree. So whether you're in IT, whether you're in finance, you should be proficient because there's CX in finance, in legal, everybody has it. Right. So it's not the role of one function, but when it's now part of the culture where as even as an, as an MD, you should be proficient in CX management because if you don't understand it, you will hinder and stifle the growth of, of CX. So key thing is every single person should be proficient in CX and CX is a, CX management is a strategic role, mm -hmm. not the necessarily the executor. Right. Because when you're now executing, it's safe to say, oh, it's not my role, it's that of the CX team. Right. But when you know that you in products, you are executing for products, you are accountable for CX mm -hmm. for products. Then my work goes into strategy. How do I align everybody together? How do I provide you with insight and support you to make sure that your products, when you design them, mm -hmm. adoption rate is high, defect rate is low, no. satisfaction is high. Right. You understand? So I think if, if we can do that, let's just focus on the full scope. And I mean, this issue about stakeholder engagement is so, is so key. Understand the full scope of customer experience in your organization first. Who is responsible for what? what? Now, we try to recreate things that are not necessary. Mm -hmm. All these different departments already have their processes. Right. So we need to plug in to the point where how does your process encourage customers to keep coming back? So for product, you are a product guy, for example, Tanuja, you're a product person. So when you do all the work, do the research, product comes out, how do I encourage you as a product manager to improve CX? I am tying adoption rates to you. Right. So if customers are not buying, it means something is wrong with the product. 
I'm, I'm, atta I'm attaching product defect rate to you as mm. a product manager. It means if customers are talking about the same thing over and over again, mm. if you check the stats, customers that have stopped using that product is because of the defects. Absolutely. So CSAT automatically comes to you. It's your KPI. Low. If that's happening, if the adoption is low, the CSAT would be low for sure. Exactly. And if you're, in, if you're in legal and part of the onboarding is that contracts need to be signed for a new customer, right. how is your process as legal or finance or risk impacting onboarding? Mm -hmm. Turn around time, people are churning. Right. How, many, how many applications have come to your desk in a month? And how many of those customers were actually onboarded? So if you had 100 applications for a new, for customers on your desk to review, and out of that 100, only two made it through, you might say you're following your process, but there's something wrong. Mm -hmm. So conversion rates for legal is a KPI for the head of legal. Right. Now it's for legal to sit with CX to say, what can we do to get customers to buy, to, to get customers to increase conversion rates? Is there something we're missing? Are we asking for too much? What are the alternatives? Now their focus has moved from complying to a legal process right. to complying to a legal process that enhances customer experience and helps the company achieve its goal of growth. Yeah, those would be, those would be my, my thoughts on that. Yeah. Debbie, this is amazing. I, I'm just loving this conversation, guys. I, I hope it never ends. It's like that for me today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come to an end. I am really, really shocked NK hasn't said so much. Yeah. So I'm NK, surprised he, that he's, he's you're keeping your promise. He, listening mode and I did not design any questions for NK today. And I <laughs> <laughs> so that's why that's why he he he's like that. So so now I completely get the picture, Debbie. I, I completely get that CX aligns with the person. Okay. So first they uh, help define the vo voice of the business first to understand that. Then link voice of the customer with the customer journey and also voice of the employee with the customer journey see which departments are responsible for which metrics, which will directly impact CX, right? Or not CX, our voice of the business, the business top line that we want to do. And and if, I, if we have to measure success for a CX person, it should be an increase in product adoption. It should be increase in conversions. It should be increase in acquisitions, right? So he's yeah. an overall yeah. guy who is who's just helping them out. But actually, yeah. but, but one thing that you mentioned, because See, this comes, uh, that's why that ROI thing is important. Once you do CX, uh, you you deploy some tools, right? You make these interactive dashboards, right? You hire some people who will be helping you out as a CX leader, right? Because you are a strategic guy, you need executioners as well, right? So you, you tend to spend a lot of money on that. So how do you correlate that amount of spend with the actual increase in business? That how how it's actually done, like not theoretically, practically how it's actually yeah. done. So practically, and this is from my personal experience mm -hmm. across all the businesses that I have worked, right? In banking, in telecoms, I don't lead with cost. I show value right. before I ask for money. Okay. No matter how small, mm -hmm. I show value before I ask for money. Right. I'll give you an example. There was a there was a problem I was with my days in telecoms. There was a pro there was a problem with postpaid um, postpaid experience, mm -hmm. and you know, with, prior to my joining, the team had requested for some loyalty tool to get feedback from people as they come back from their roaming experience, all of that stuff. And I said, who is going to approve? There's no picture to show that if you buy this tool, you will solve the problem. Right. Right. So. I just, I just, I just, you know, I just subscribed for one of the survey platforms without advertising for them. Right. And with my own money, because it wasn't a lot of money, right? Mm -hmm. And it's just a habit I have. I don't know if it's very professional, but it's just that's you know, how I roll, right? right? And I just signed up and deployed that. So usually they would, they would call at the contact center, start to call people for days. So you can imagine the amount of money on airtime, mm -hmm. manpower, right. calling over two, three. So this is the 21 million subscriber base, right? Calling so many people. And I'm like, if these guys are roaming, it means they have access to data. They are, can, they can afford data and get in it, right? Mm -hmm. And they would, this, once this exercise is done, they would have called say 200 people, mm -hmm. which is a very small sample size. And you know, you cannot trust even the execution of the because you have to call them, you ask questions and someone imputes the data. So there's also human error, 
right? Now, we just launched that. Just, you know, put up the design of the survey question again in line with the customer journey from a scope perspective right. and launch the survey. And we got over 800 responses. So in right. real time, we're seeing data because this platform shows you the analytics of it as well. We're right. seeing the trouble spots in the roaming experience, especially for right. postpaid customers. Mm -hmm. And we use this data to encourage it. Because, and in this case, we focus on little things that we could fix without spending money. Right. When we measured the second cycle, there was an improvement. And we used that to make a case for spend. Right. Right. So again, the people who, had, who were roaming, you had mm -hmm. more people who roamed, some of the issues with how be it manual. Mm -hmm. It's just a lot. Sometimes we sometimes we are lazy actually. To be we just want <laughs> to press the button and solve the problem. But right. if you want to really show the value of CX, you have to allow your organization to understand it, to bring, to see value, then right. they will spend money. Mm -hmm. They might not spend the kind of money that you want to spend. So a very key attribute for a CX professional for leadership is for you to be intrapreneurial. Think mm -hmm. like you run a business. How do you save money? You're not there to spend money. Rather than hire more people, how can you have, how can you even train people that are already within? Mm -hmm and put everybody in a room for a project period right. who is interested in CX, knowledge sharing, right? So I, I don't, I, I personally, I don't believe in taking on costs when you kick off this kind of project because CX is still very new. We're still right. showing value unless it's a business that knows their situation, what they need, what they, what they want you to hand, that's fine. But if you want to drive change, you need people, yes. But do you need people right away is the question. Right. So look at your costs, look at your expense. Hmm. What can you do without? Mm -hmm. What are the free options for what you want to achieve? Right. I so, negotiate with, 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 with you know, international partners every time where I'm working on a project with a client. I tell you, my client doesn't have a budget. Can you run this and I will advertise for you and think like a business person? Right. Yeah, that would be my recommendation. Yeah. So, so Show the, the value first be, before hmm. you push. So first thing would be identify that problem which can be yeah. solved quickly like a, a very in a very short time so that you can value show value quickly because if you need more people and you want to show value first because that will help your cause right you want more people i need more people as a cx guy yeah. but let and me show you something that i can do yeah right? yes. with the people exactly. that i have exactly right and so then you now begin to sit at the top right you will not earn your place at the top because the business knows that you are conscious right of what the business cares about right so I always say, don't live with costs. There's no solution that will solve all your problems. Technology is not the answer. Absolutely, yeah. It's, yeah. it's, it's about understanding the problem and then yeah. figuring out a way to solve it first with only the people that you have. And if you can repeat, if you can do that success once, you tell your CEO that I can repeat it if I have a little bit more money, yeah. right? And the yeah. repeat, uh, the, the cost that the repeat of doing this will cost and the ROI mm -hmm. that it will get you would have all, yeah. already proven some kind of ROI in that first value that you delivered, right? Absolutely. So that's you, you, have to, you, have to earn, you have to earn the trust. Right. As a CX leader, you have to earn the trust of your organization. They're not going to give it to you for free. You have to earn it. Right. I, I, I just loved it. So I don't think, uh, I, I don't know if you, you guys will want to give an answer, but now I think, uh, I don't think this question would be relevant that is there a formula for calculating the CXROI? You what just you heard, right? You just heard that. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that... It's really a formula for... So it depends on... I mean, in my, in my view, it depends on what what the focus was, the objective of the improvement was. Right. For me, that, that's, that's really it, really. What was the purpose of the improvement program? Mm -hmm. Was that objective achieved? Right. How was that objective achieved from the from the position of customer acquisition, satisfaction and retention. Right. Did you get new customers before and after? Customer satisfaction before and after. And then satisfaction is good, but is it leading to loyalty? Right. So how many customers did we retain? Right. How many customers increased their spend? Mm -hmm. Which is why you have to start with that bigger picture. What's the goal? What problem do I want to solve? Did I solve? So better on line, the ROI formula really is, did you solve the problem? <laughs> I, I think yeah before and after yeah i have to create a lot of content on this guys this has so, been so i think it's very very uh, real but um, 
if if you have set up the objective then like that that is something uh, your business goal right so you have already set up that this is something that you want to target up so like debbie said that uh, 5000 customer so that's the set target right so mm-hmm. depending upon then you start doing your initiative saying right. that oh the initiative x initiative y marketing campaigning customer experience measure close the loop and blah 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 you design entire experience for that right and then you track it over the basically the goal what were you with this experience were you able to achieve that 5000 customer right or over achieve or like how much you were able to achieve right mm. that will be actually give you the realistic picture because as a cx guy if you are able to achieve that goal or like uh, like hit that above to that goal that is that means that your initiative is is working mm. and you are able to get an roi but the reason is if you are not able to measure that appropriately and you don't understand where the faults happens and most of that I'll, i'll tell you that in the cx program like almost 90% time like the people fail uh, and not able to achieve the targets and not even yeah. like you know close to 70% of that right the reason is that designing this and i'm going back to that what debbie said is that about customer experience management is not right mm. like you know there is no way to uh keep a track in tight where the gaps are and how we have to tap those gaps and what actions are been taken people are like easy enough to create a diagram or like you know the entire experience journey but when when it actually come to the execution it's it's that is where uh, the balls get dropped so we have to like focus on the execution once you have a great design the execution is the key if you are not getting the execution that your roi is not going to be there okay. so i think like tightening up the execution on your cx program is very very important right i agree and and what do you guys say about like uh, once once the cx guy comes in what, and he brings the small value and then he brings more people what is generally the ideal time frame to measure the roi of cx like it's it's not like in 3 months you'll understand completely that doing this will make this impact right and you have as a as a business owner you have long term visions as well for 5 years 10 years right so uh, this the, the last question on this uh, the bnnk what what would be the ideal frame to measure the roi of cx if you want to answer so i, I would yeah No, I mean NK. You can go and then whichever works for you. Fine with it. No, 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 no. Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> okay. So I would say I would say complete the cycle before right. you measure. Right. Complete the cycle. So you've done your measurement. Identify what you want to improve. You've executed the improvement. Mm-hmm. Measure. So you have to complete the cycle because the whole point of measuring is to check what worked and what didn't work. Right. Right. So complete the cycle, and it depends on the organization. Sometimes completing the cycle will be three months. Right. maybe 6 months in case may be but if it's if it's that lengthy mm-hmm. what you can now do is to get begin to get feedback across the points of customer interaction which is your channel right so you can get feedback across the different journey stages right mm-hmm. cumulating to that big one just to track but mm-hmm. i would not recommend you measure until you go full cycle full circle rather on okay. your on your improvement plan yeah Okay. Awesome. I think uh, we we are short on time now. Uh, Debbie and K, you and oh, we all of us have to leave. So, I think it was a lovely lovely discussion Debbie. Thank you so much for joining us and giving Thank your Thank you for having me. Now, this was absolutely brilliant conversation that that I had. Uh, I I don't think I've ever had it before NK. I only had I only had these kind of <laughs> conversations with NK before. but it was lovely <laughs> and i had no i had promise i had promise i had promise so i i think i'll 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 like to have you guys more again i uh, will discuss about no some other topics some other day right but it was lovely having yeah. you here uh, so uh, i think nk do, do you want to say something else no i think i as as i promised i have to speak less today right so um <laughs> not much uh, but yeah i think uh, Uh, on the last point that debbie says complete the cycle right that's so like uh, important you know because you, whatever you do you have to make sure that there is a 
process for it like whether it's a medical prescription or if you you're doing anything in a bodybuilding or you are you're doing any kind of exercise right right so it it has a time frame for that and you define that and it is it is done at the time of start only so when you actually designing your customer experience program mm-hmm. you say that this is my goal this is my target and i want to just watch it out for like next 6 month 3 months target i want to achieve this 6 month i want to want to achieve this or make sure that you are actually you know doing the execution on that first 3 months for like you know on the 6 right. month and then measure yeah. it and then you see the yeah. result right yeah so and you think, take it down and then achieve your uh, measure your targets on that point yeah and i think we will we'll talk about this on the next episode nk designing surveys designing the dashboard and how we can measure success so let's talk right. uh, let's uh, wait for that for the for the next episode and then we'll talk about how we can design this so thank you so much debbie again for joining thank us you it was lovely me. having thank you, so you. Thank See you. you. Like, have a great start of the day, and I'm sure like uh, you wanna be like so uh, much energy. Uh, and no, no, uh, she has. She's always okay, energetic. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you for having Bye-bye. me. Bye. 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 Bye